Hi everyone. If you have heard of the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment, you are probably baffled by it. Its results seem to imply that retrocausality is real. The aim of this video is to explain the experiment's results without invoking retrocausality. This video contains some equations. But I hope that you watch it to the end. There is a bunch of videos in the internet about this experiment. However, most of them are just trying to mystify it and not really explain it. I hope that this video can help to demystify the experiment. However, there are still a few YouTube videos that I think are good, for example the video series from PBS Spacetime and a video from Science Asylum. If you are not familiar with this experiment, I recommend that you watch these videos first. I also found a good website and paper during the making of this video. Since many people have covered the story behind this experiment, I think I don't have to talk about them again. So, I will just start with the explanation. The diagram on the next slide is a schematic diagram of the experimental setup that I copied from Wikipedia. And this is a copy of the schematic diagram from the original paper. To understand the diagram, you can either read the Wikipedia page, or the paper. The next images are the experiment's results. Again, you can read more about them in the Wikipedia page. How can we explain these results? Let's get started with the explanation. For simplicity, I replaced the two-beam splitter with two mirrors. In this case, the idler photon can only be detected by either D3 or D4. The setup is designed such that the signal photon will reach the detector D0 before the idler photon can reach the other detectors. The results are obtained by joint measurement using the coincidence counter. The detections are only kept when there is a joint measurement. I think it is important to note that it is consistent to use the wave picture of light to explain the result. Using the Copenhagen interpretation language, the particle picture is only needed when the wave function has fully collapsed. When a single photon is sent through the double slit, its wave function passes through both slits. The state of the photon can be written as Here is a reminder, we are still using the wave picture. The circles are just a simplifies representation of the photon. The photon can then be down converted to two lower energy photon by the BBO crystal. The photon state can now be represented by. This expression can be found in the paper, with C representing the conservation laws and the entanglement. This expression is actually equivalent to the expression, which represent momentum entanglement between the signal and the idler photon. Let us see how the system evolves. The purple dot on the detector D0 represents that we have no idea from which slit the photon came from by only knowing where it lands on the detector D0. When the signal photon is detected by D0, the state collapses only partially, because the idler photon still carries the which path information and has not yet been detected. When the idler photon is detected, the state collapses completely. Let us see how we can understand this with some mathematics. The position space wave function of the signal photon can be written as. For simplicity, we assume that the momentum of the photons are well defined, and therefore we can remove the summation sign. The probability distribution of the signal photon on detector D0 is the absolute square of the wave function. We see that the cross term for the interference pattern is absent in the expression. This is due to the orthogonality between the terms Kia and Kib. This means that we will not see interference pattern no matter what happened to the idler photons later. We will see later how the interference patterns seemingly reappear when the idler photon is detected by either D1 or D2. When the signal photon is detected, the state of the entangled photons pair partially collapses into where x0 represents the landing position of the signal photon on detector D0, and epsilon is just a normalization factor. So, psi sa and psi sb can be interpreted as weights to the component ai and bi. 
It is important to note that this is just a partial collapse, because we cannot determine from which slit the original photon went through by just knowing the landing positions of the signal photons, if their wave functions have enough overlapping region. And the idler photon still carries the which path information and has not yet been detected. Therefore, the which path information has not leaked out yet. Using this result, the probability that the idler photon get detected at detector D3 is therefore. One might ask, if there is no interference, shouldn't we see two strips instead of a broad distribution? This is because the wave functions overlap sufficiently enough, therefore separated strips are not visible. How can we understand physically the absence of interference pattern due to the orthogonality of the two terms Kia and Kib? One can understand it like this, the idler photon carries the which path information of the pair, and one could in principle extract this information by doing some measurement on the idler photon, for example by directing it to be detected by D3 or D4. This availability of the which path information acts like a label to the states of the signal photon, making it unable produce the interference pattern. The theoretical treatment given in the original paper by Kim et al. is quite different from the one shown here just now. The authors used the technique commonly employed in quantum optics. They calculate the joint detection counting rate between detector D0 and one of the other detectors. Since there are two detectors involved, second-order correlation function is used to calculate the joint detection counting rate. For people who wants to learn more about correlation functions, I recommend the book, Quantum Optics, by Scully and Zubairi, in particular section 4.2. This treatment, as far as I know, is the standard quantum mechanical treatment for photon detection. However, I think it is more helpful to show step by step how the state of the photons evolves in different stages. Okay, back to the experiment. If the idler photon gets detected at D4, the explanation is similar to the previous case. Again, when the signal photon is detected by detector D0, the state only collapses partially, using the Copenhagen interpretation. Once the idler photon gets detected at D4, the state collapses fully to the red path. Using the same analysis, the probability that the idler photon get detected at D4 is now, we have considered the cases where the idler photon get detected at D3 and D4. Now, let us consider the case when the two mirrors are removed. In this case, the idler photon will be detected at either D1 or D2. Same as the previous cases, the setup is designed in a way such that the signal photon will reach detector D0 earlier than the idler photon reaches detectors D1 and D2. The purple circles on the detectors represent that we cannot figure out from which slit the original photon went through by just knowing where the signal photon lands on D0 and idler photon get detected at D2. The situation is similar when the idler photon get detected at detector D1. Please also don't forget what the coincident counter is doing. Like before, let us see how the state of the entangled photons evolves. The initial state and the state after the signal photon gets detected are the same as the ones in the first two cases. Again, this is only a partial collapse, because we are still unable to tell from which slit the original photon went through just by knowing where the signal photon landed on D0. The effect or the operation of the 50 to 50 beam splitter to the idler photon state can be represented as a matrix. The derivation can be found in AMIT OCW video. The state of the photon can be rewritten as. This makes it easier for us to use the matrix form of the beam splitters operation on the state of the idler photon. After the idler photon reaches the beam splitter, the state evolves to. Which can be rewritten as. Therefore, the probability that the idler photon gets detected at D2 is. Similarly, the probability that the idler photon gets detected at D1 is. We see that there is a sign difference between the interference terms for the two cases. 
the minus sign or minus 1 can be rewritten as. Therefore, there is a pi phase shift between the two interference patterns. Here is a reminder, we still cannot see any interference pattern on D0. The patterns only arise when we group the landing positions of the signal photons according to where the idler photons are detected. The conclusion of this video is We can explain the experiment results by saying that where the idler photons will be detected depends on the landing position of the signal photon. We do not have to invoke retrocausality to explain it. I hope that you find this video helpful and I hope that this video helps to demystify the famous delayed choice quantum eraser experiment. Thank you for watching.